my dear students so far we have learnt about naming of organic compounds so i know now you can name any kind of carbon compound this will help you understand chemical properties of carbon compounds first type of reaction which we have to study is combustion reaction carbon in all its electropic forms burns in oxygen to give carbon dioxide along with release of heat and light you have to take note of this point that saturated hydrocarbon generally give blue flame whereas unsaturated hydrocarbon give a yellow flame with a black smoke but you also have to remember this in actual state type of flame depends upon oxygen supplied that is incomplete combustion in limited or insufficient supply of air leads to smoky flame now there is a task for you you must have seen burning of camphor if you have not please try it out when you will take a piece of camphor on a spatula and if you burn it you will see yellow and smoky flame what is the reason in the structure of camphor there is presence of unsaturated bonds and try to correlate with burning of alcohol what outcome you will get alcohol is a cleaner fuel when you will burn it you will get blue flame because it burns completely and it have saturated bonds so this is a task for you and you'll do that have fun in doing so if you place a metal plate also when you are burning camphor you will find the deposition of that smoky flame or that smoke on the plate so you can correlate your information with that why do substance burn with and without a flame my dear students look for the answer for this question our next reaction is substitution reaction saturated hydrocarbons are fairly unreactive and are inert in presence of most of the reagents however in presence of sunlight chlorine is added to hydrocarbon and it is a very fast reaction chlorine can replace the hydrogen atom one by one it is called substitution reaction because one type of atom or a group of atom takes the place of another it happens in saturated hydrocarbons you have to take a point this also a number of products are usually formed with higher homologue of alkanes for the chemical equation involved please have a look on the screen here you can see how one chlorine is replacing hydrogen of this saturated hydrocarbon our next reaction is oxidation reaction carbon compounds can be easily oxidized on combustion in addition to complete oxidation we have reactions in which alcohols are converted to carboxylic acids and in presence of what there are two kind of reagents which are used first is alkaline potassium permanganate which is a mixture of potassium permanganate and any sort of alkali that can be naoh or acidified potassium dichromate which is a mixture of potassium dichromate and any kind of acid like h2so4 please have a look on the screen for understanding the reaction on the left hand side you will take alcohol which you need to oxidize and you are already aware by now that in above the arrow you have to write the reagents so here i have used a reagent either alkaline potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate and what is the result result is formation of carboxylic acid here also you have to take note of an important point the number of carbons which were there in alcohol same number of carbons will be there in the acidic side so try to write this reaction and have fun addition reactions is the last reactions which we'll talk about unsaturated hydrocarbons add hydrogen in the presence of catalyst such as palladium or nickel to give saturated hydrocarbon now a question arises what are catalyst 
Catalysts are the substances that cause a reaction to occur or proceed at a different rate without the reaction itself being affected. This reaction is commonly used in the hydrogenation of vegetable oils using a nickel catalyst. Now a question for you again, which type of oil should we use in cooking? Saturated oil or unsaturated oil? Oils containing unsaturated fatty acids should be chosen for cooking because vegetable oils generally have long unsaturated carbon chains while animal fat has saturated carbon chain. Vegetable oils are healthy but animal fats generally contain saturated fatty acids it can be harmful for your health. So if you look at the equation on the left hand side as you can see we have an alkene with a double bond in between two carbons and on the arrow we have written some conditions that is presence of catalyst and as a result we have formed alkane. Now you have already learned balancing in your previous chapter so the task for you is to write a balanced chemical equation. Some important compounds are also there. Our first compound is ethanol. I told you the formula of ethanol please relate the formula is C2 H5OH that means presence of OH group. If you talk about general properties of ethanol it is a colorless liquid with a pleasant smell and burning taste. It is soluble in water but do you know alcohol affect living beings a lot. Have you ever thought about it? My dear students consuming alcohol affects the central nervous system and an individual may not realize that his or her sense of timing and muscular coordination gets seriously impaired. Do you know children, methanol is oxidized to methanol in the liver. So you have to look for the answer why. Actually methanol is poisonous and my dear students, if we use alcohol that is methanol for drinking purposes it converts into methanol which actually harms your cell it coagulates your protoplasm and for your information alcohol is a cleaner fuel look for the reason why it is a cleaner fuel why do we use it my dear students you have already learned that when acid reacts with metal which gas is released come on students think yes hydrogen gas and what is the test of that hydrogen gas? Pop sound. So my dear students, task for you. You have to add a small grain of sodium metal in alcohol and see what happens. Which gas is released? You will find hydrogen gas is released. But make sure you carry out this reaction in presence of your teacher because extra precautions is needed. And when you test the presence of this gas, it is pop sound. You know how to do it. So please try and explore. Ethanol reacts with hot concentrated sulfuric acid to form ethene. For the reaction, please have a look on the screen. My dear students, for your information, I should tell you, concentrated sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent, which means it removes water from ethanol. So please have a look for the reaction on the screen. If you take alcohol, that is ethanol, and you add few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid, it will remove water from it. And what it will form? It will form C2H4. Now you have to tell me, what is the name of this molecular formula C2H4? Very good. It is alkene, which is ethene, because it is two carbons and four hydrogens. Ethanol is used for making alcoholic drinks. It is used as a solvent and it is used for making medicines like tincture of iodine. Our next compound is ethanoic acid. Now you have to tell me the formula, we have already done that. Yes, formula is CH3COOH because it is presence of two carbons. The common name of ethanoic acid is acetic acid. Let's talk about its basic properties. Ethanoic acid is a colorless liquid with a pungent smell and sour taste. It is soluble in water. 
and if you talk about the most common ethanoic acid found at home is vinegar which is 5 to 8 percent of ethanoic acid. My dear students, next reaction which we have to study in ethanoic acid is esterification reaction. And for understanding esterification reaction, let us have a look on the setup. In the setup, first I will take a tripod stand. I will put wire gauze over it. Then I will take this kind of a setup where I have taken a beaker filled with some water considering as a water bath. In the test tube, I added three things. First, 1 ml of ethanol, then 1 ml of ethanoic acid and only few drops, let's suppose 1 to 2 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Then I have to keep burning spirit lamp like this. And I have to wait for 4 to 5 minutes. Once time is over, eventually you will have a smell of fruits. It will be a fruity smell. And how do I experience that? The vapors of that fruity smell I'll raft and I'll experience. I know you are not able to smell it, but explore in your lab in presence of your teacher and experience this smell. Now my dear students, please have a look on the screen for knowing the reaction. In the reaction, ethanoic acid which is CH3COOH reacts with ethanol which is C2H5OH and above the arrow you will write concentrated sulfuric acid. Now you know concentrated sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent. It will remove water from both of the initial reactants and it will form fruity smelling compound known as ester whose formula is CH3, COO, C2H5 and water. The reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol is always used to form an ester. This reaction is known as esterification reaction. My dear students, let us understand another reaction of ethanoic acid. For that, I have taken this kind of a tube that is a U-tube. If you can see, in this I have added sodium hydrogen carbonate and in this area I have added lime water. As you can see, it is a colorless liquid right now. What I have to do? I have to add ethanoic acid in this and I have to see what happens. Students, we have already done this reaction before. If I add few drops of ethanoic acid, As you can see some bubbles, that means reaction has initiated. My dear students, have a look. That colorless liquid that is lime water changes to milky white. What does it indicate? That the gas which was released is carbon dioxide gas and when it passes through lime water, it turns it to be milky. So for the reaction, please have a look on the screen. Here I have used sodium hydrogen carbonate. You can use any carbonate, maybe sodium carbonate and so on. My dear students, as we have seen in this reaction, lime water was taken in a U-tube and when I passed carbon dioxide gas, it changes its color to milky white. Now question arises, if I keep lime water undisturbed for some time, will it change its color? This is a question for you to think. Explore and find out the answer. Next reaction is saponification reaction and it is in direct link with esterification reaction. Students, you should know that we have done in esterification where alcohol reacts with acid in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid and we got ester which was a fruity smelling compound whose formula is CH3, COO, C2H5. Now we have to take this ester and treat it with NaOH. That means we are doing alkaline hydrolysis of ester. So my reactant become CH3COOC2H5 plus NaOH. Now please have a look on screen for products of this reaction. Our products will be CH3COONA plus C2H5OH. 
this is actually preparation of soap. What are soap? Soaps are long chain sodium or potassium salt of carboxylic acid. One of the famous example is sodium stearate. Now you have to understand structure of soap. Please have a look on the screen. Soap molecule have two parts. First part is hydrocarbon part which is known as hydrophobic water repelling. As you can see on the screen this zigzag line represent hydrophobic part and this part is water repelling but it is soluble in oil and the second part in the soap is ionic part which is also known as hydrophilic part which is also considered as water attracting part and it is insoluble in oil. Ok my dear students let us perform one interesting activity. We will take two test tubes. Each test tube will be filled with equal amount of water and in one of the test tube we will add one or two drops of any cooking oil. After that one by one we will add soap solution in equal amount in both the test tubes and then we will have equal number of shaking in both the test tubes. And let's see what do we observe. This is the test tube in which oil is added. We will add 2 ml of soap solution. Now we will do shaking of this test tube. Now please do remember when you are doing shaking it will have equal number of shakes. Let's see how. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you can see oil is dissolved and this kind of a liquid is emulsion. When I will do the same with the test tube with water. We will again do shaking of this test tube. You can see foam but our purpose was to understand cleansing action of soap. That means our soap molecule help us dissolve the oil droplet. Now my dear students please have a look on the screen to understand cleansing action of soap better. When soap is dissolved in water it forms spherical structure called micelle. In each micelle the soap molecule are arranged radially such that the hydrocarbon part is towards the center and the ionic part is towards outside. The hydrocarbon part dissolves the dirt that is oil or grease and forms an emulsion at the center of the micelle which can be washed away by water. Now my dear students a question for you. What will happen if we use alcohol as solvent for washing? Will it behave same as water? Try to find out. Students there is another task for you. Prepare your own soap. And how to prepare for that? Take help of internet or any book from library and try to find out. And students if you want your soap to have good aroma you can add few petals of rose. Students let us perform one more activity. We have two samples of water in equal amount. Now we will add soap solution in both of it in equal amount again. And what we want to see which one is hard and which one is soft. So let us see one by one.
as we can see there is some layer of foam now we will perform same with other test tube Now my dear students, if we compare both of the test tubes, we can easily see more foam is there in this test tube in my right hand. So we can say this test tube, this water is more softer than the water taken in the left hand test tube. Now you have to also note in hard water, you have less amount of foam. Both of these are soft waters. But if you want to make hard water, you can simply add any salt of calcium and magnesium and make your water hard and try out and explore this experiment with different samples of water. So you can take your samples and test with different samples of water. So students, we have learnt about soap. What are detergents? Detergents are sodium salts of long chain sulfonic acids. Soaps do not wash well with hard water because it forms insoluble precipitate of calcium and magnesium salt. Detergents wash well with hard water because it does not form insoluble precipitate of calcium and magnesium salts in hard water. So students, we need to know the difference between soap and detergents. Soap is sodium salt of long chain carboxylic acid whereas detergents are long chain sodium salts of sulfonic acid. Detergents clean better than soap. Soaps are biodegradable and usually detergents are non-biodegradable. So my dear students let us conclude. You will be able to explain about various reactions like combustion, oxidation, addition and substitution reactions. You will be able to plan and conduct experiment to seek answer to the questions. You will be able to exhibit value of honesty by reporting the observations and you will be able to communicate the findings. You will be able to make efforts to conserve environment. My dear students, keep exploring and learn more. Happy learning.